at peace. We're about to start our study session. Um, we're going to start with, uh, we're in a chapter called The Third Overstanding, The Divine Performance, and we on Perform Love. Um, show your love, be compassionate and caring, give others the devotion you expect from God. For our God is divine love, and this love is not blind. It is lust that is blind. Love is unconditional. It makes itself available to the love. Love is patient. Love suffers long. Love is kind. Love proves and empowers one's ability to teach and guide others. Allow God to manifest through you toward others. It is from God that your love comes, and it is from here that we correctly express our love. Love all and hate none, but when all hate, love none. To truly love is to unite with being, with the being of others. And at the beginning of your spiritual understanding, it is important to guard your heart, for love is healthy and hate is disease. Love all who deserves your love and hate no one for in love you are truly protected and empowered the attuned hip hopper knows that god is the headliner in every arena of life and that it is god's performance that is sure to follow the hip hopper's opening act of true love be the love to those that truly deserve it see the holiness in those people even when they cannot see it in themselves their divinity is the truth of their being Therefore, let us practice speaking only to the divine nature of people. Such is their true essence. But do not live in denial of those who do not truly love you. Even when you are cursed out and or disrespected, remain calm and centered, knowing that such responses are not the truth of anyone's being. Such responses are indeed temporary. This is why the immature always regret what they say and do and often wind up apologizing for it. Wait for the apology because those who return to their right mind and seek your pardon of their immaturity deserve your love and understanding. If you remain calm in the midst of such temporary fits of rage, ignorance, immaturity, or sadness, eventually you will see those angered, in ignorant, immature, depressed people return to their true state of peace, awareness, and normalcy. And if they truly respect you, even love you, they will apologize not for their own well-being but for yours anger and sadness are not normal for any human being therefore such states are always temporary joy is normal peace is normal love is normal the opposite of this is abnormal at all times perform with love search your heart for the people you love most and love them look at the people you love and say with your inner voice i love you make this a habit Despite the emphasis others may place upon doing things strictly for payment, in whatever you do, perform it with love. If you hate or dislike what you do, stop doing it. Mm. If you dislike or hate what you do, even if you are paid for it, ultimately the result of your comp compensation will not be fulfilling. In fact, it will only depress you. Therefore, do what you love to do. And do not be afraid to do whatever it is that you love to do. Find time for it. Although forgotten, hip hop was created out of love. Early hip hoppers performed their elements out of love, with or without payment. Early hip hoppers loved hip hop with all tasks and people with all tasks and people show love. Conversation, discussion on the performance of love. Perform love. Any insights? I was reading, I didn't get the mark nothing down. Dope, dope, dope. Um I like I like where he's where he states if you don't like if you don't love what you do, stop. If you don't love what you do, stop. Because the whole piece is um I guess the I don't guess, but love attracts and if you're not doing something out of love you you're robbing yourself you're robbing the tasks that you're doing and you're robbing the people that you're working with because you're attracting 
what you actually feel. You know what I'm saying? So if you depressed about doing some shit and you do it, I think you bring that depression into that whole situation. Bring sadness into that whole situation. Um, anything else we want to just keep on reading? Oh, just thinking about hip hop. I know that was a time when we expressed love. He said, "Say if you love something, say that you love it." And right. I can remember just being embraced, and just the greeting was love. The greeting was peace. The greeting was like you was happy. Like what's up? And you show that love when you see each and and even if it was just leaving, I love you. You don't get that no more. I don't feel that. I mean, it's not that time. Well, yeah, man. It's right. certainly not that time. Any, anybody want some more meat? Me. <laughs> I want to feel the love. Speaking of feeling love, we experimenting on um, with some me right now. Brother Hot Tim is in production, so I bring it out to my family after I let after me and my brewing brother. Finished doing our little sampling. I gotta say something for him because he about six five, and if I come over there with an empty jug, it's gonna be problems. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be problems. But but um, then I like the piece where you talk about in your head at the people that you do love silently, so that you love them. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like that little voice, so you can always practice. Because um, one of the things about one of the things I loved about hip hop is that whole mastery piece because it's like. To be good at hip hop, you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, love putting love into hip hop is something. Uh, how can I do it? Putting it into hip hop means that now we have to practice that or perform that. So when we look at those, like when I'm looking at y'all and I'm looking at my wife and I'm looking at my kids, I got to silently start practicing sending that love vibe that you was talking about. Mm-hmm. And another piece about hip hop that I that I when hip hop was free, um, we were doing it out of love. I mean, there was no money coming. We would have parties. I mean, and you might charge a little bit of money getting a party, but everything was free. It was abundant. It was right. You was it was like. You got people break dancing. You got people rapping. Nobody looking for any money. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it was it was out of love that we did this thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's deep when you talk about it because I mean, as Common put it in his song, it, it was hip hop was my first love affair. You know what I'm saying? What well, well football was, but hip hop eased her up, eased football up out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But hip hop was my first true love affair. You know what I'm saying? Because I, oh my God, the time I used to spend on on break dancing, and I'm thinking about that man, and 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 I'm saying it kept me sane in junior high and high school. It kept me safe in junior high and high school because I was investing so much time in that that I wasn't out doing some of the dumb shit that other people my age was doing at that time. No, yeah, literally in Chicago. A book bag and your hip hop persona demeanor would save you going through certain territories. Like, nah, that's that's a hip hop yeah, yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Literally. But I mean and and I got I, I got a habit. I go to cities and I just start walking around. And this bugs this bugs people out. Cities, woods, whatever. And it's like I have been in threatening situations. But I never really feel threatened. You know what I'm saying? It's like my persona, because of the way it's been honed out in hip hop, is like I'm people don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? People don't bother me. And that's what I'm trying to get some of my, my young people to understand is 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 the vibe that you carry with yourself that invites certain people to either mess with you or it invites them to leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and hip hop put this thing on me where no matter, I mean, whether I'm going um, um, to a board meeting or whether I'm going through a neighborhood, it's love. It reminds me of the movie Slam with, uh, is it Saw? Yeah, Saw, Saw Way. Yeah, did you see, did y'all see that? Yeah. And it was a scene in the movie where he was about to get attacked 
in the yard. And then from the heavens, <laughs> he pulled, you know, out this rhyme, and it just neutralized everybody and everything. And, and that was cold. Yeah, that was the dopest that, movie that, to that date. Shit, that shit was cold. <laughs> Indeed. So um, that that's what hip hop was, and it you when you when you get around that energy. You can feel it. It is it is nothing but love. And he spoke of that too earlier when we first started reading the text. He start he started saying stuff about if you wonder how you made it, even through all the whatever, you probably should have been out of here. He talked about this thing he called grace. Right. And that's kind of what the spirit of hip hop granted hip hoppers. Right. Grace. That's that's that that's a good word for it. It's like mm-hmm. I got some hip hop grace. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's, it's crazy, man. I've been in some crazy-ass situations, and I didn't even feel threatened. It's like, you know, I I was in the club, a motherfucker came in with a... He busted in with a gun and started waving a gun. And everybody ducking and shit. I'm like, shit, can I have another drink? I I got to reach over to the... Hey, can I get another drink? You know, I'm like, what the fuck? You you know, this nigga, he ain't trying to shoot me. He just mad. Hey. Hey, with grace, you protect the people. (laughs) Everybody ducked down. I'm just sitting up here like, damn, hey. Hey, I finally got the bartender's attention. Hey, can I get a drink? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's... But you know, it is what it is, man. It's that love. that And that love is a powerful thing. And that's one of the things that... um, I, I, that's it's two things in our community. I think that we lost track of. We lost the track of uh, of the, the uh, and understanding of how to use love mm-hmm. and reciprocity. Mm. They go hand in hand. Mm. They work together. Mm-hmm. They work together. Mm-hmm. And we lost we lost the balance between love and reciprocity. Mm. You know, we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's that's something I really been I, I really been honing in on this whole concept of love and reciprocity. Um, There's one more point before we move on. I want to definitely bring up. I wrote down about, um, and I've been working on this. In fact, I've been feeling kind of I don't want to say it, but I might as well like guilty. Because he talked about remain calm in the face of those who basically try to send you off. Right. And that is true discipline and mastery when you can do that. And right now my fuse has been short. Like I be like, oh, as soon as it come for me, I'm sending, I'm sending it out with a response. But I'm, I'm working on trying to remain calm and uh, I guess now express some love. Or at least speak to the divine nature, as he says, speak to the divine nature of people, even with those who are trying to, you know, send you off. Find the divine nature in them. I'm working on it. Oh shit, that's something we are working on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause shit, I lose it sometimes too. <laughs> and, uh, but like I said, it, but uh, it's like when he say, look at that divine nature. It's almost like. Every op- one of my 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 wife is one of my master teachers. You see what I'm saying? Because she could set me off quick, and it's you know, and it's like we have to recognize people for that. You know what I'm saying? And have subtle reminders like this study, this whole study session. You know what I'm saying? We come here and we know this shit, and this is just a subtle reminder. You know what I'm saying? And and it's powerful. You know because mm-hmm. hopefully. Hopefully one day we can remind y'all be, be be with me and be able to remind me about what the fuck I need to be practicing. Sometime. Mm-hmm. You know, like like the one time I went off during the session. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, I'll make you make you call your daddy on me. I'm I, cause these guy it's like boom, cause it's like um when people don't take what you're doing um, seriously. Mm-hmm. They don't respect it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that could, that that that's that's one of the things that that sets that sets me off, mm-hmm. and I got to remember how to deal with that when I come to those situations. But um, anybody want to read next? Or anybody got anything else they wanted to add about the divine performance of love? Mm-hmm. Perform faith. Uh, Distribute the distri- ah. Demonstrate your faith. Do not live exclusively by your natural reasoning or believe exclusively what your 
senses tell you live by faith. Faith is not just a belief in, in unseen things. It is an unconditional confirmation of the finished work. It is a knowing or expectation or expectant, expectancy. expectancy that comes from living a spiritual and virtuous life. Faith is not an inv inv invisible thing. It is a very visible thing. It has physical effects. In fact, faith is invisible substance of visible things. Faith is simply what you perceive as real. Is God real to you or God's abilities real to you? Whatever you believe your God can actually do shall be done. Because of unrighteous and unspiritual living, if you, not, if you do not truly perceive your spirit abilities and the strength of your God, then it is, it is your own doubt that weakens the supernatural abilities of your own spirit over the material world. Live a virtuous life, and every month do something or say something that requires faith. Practice faith, expect results. An example, as simple and as easy as it is to faithfully order food from a restaurant, you should likewise faithfully order health, love, awareness, and or wealth from the universe. In this example, the universe is the restaurant. When you know what, when you know that you have money to eat, you effort, effortlessly and confidently enter the restaurant, sit down, and order whatever you have a taste for. Such is the same with spiritual living. When you know that you have an abundance of spiritual money, faith, the effect of righteous, virtue, living, uh, healthfulness, patience, and etc., you boldly order from the universe those things that you need. Just as easy as you might order order a beer from a bar with the confidence that comes from the righteous living. Order for yourself peace and prosperity with the same expectation expectancy. Point to the unseen and translate the unheard. Practice exercising your faith by ordering things in faith. Temple members are are united in the faith that hip hop is God's response to all to our suffering. Our faith as hip hop is established through our trust in the divinity of our unique historical experiences. At the heights of our faith, knowing we believe that our God has called a new nation to being, we are the, we are they who we who are called of God. We are a new people, a truly free people. We are not subject subjected to the blessings, curses, and prophecies of other nations and faiths. God is dealing with us right now. Today we are holy, integrated people having omnipresent power. The truly untuned hip hopper performs and walks in this faith knowing. Those who walk in this faith and both regularly and randomly perform acts of this faith are truly inspired and rarely depressed. They are joyous and strong while others remain anxious and weak. They are at peace even when others are afraid. These are the effects of faith. For God is an exact God. Those that live by faith need not an abundance of anything. They always have exactly what they need exactly when they need it. In fact, this is this is the abundance. Not never never too soon, never too late, never too much, and never too little. The faith will always have exactly enough. Faith and the knowing that comes from righteous living eliminate fear and doubt. And likewise, fear and doubt caused by ignorance and unrighteous living eliminate faith. Decide right now which of two which of the two you shall serve, fear, faith, or faith, doubting or knowing, surviving or living. Practice faith by performing random acts of faith. In trouble in troubling situations, be still and know that your God is God. Store up your spiritual money, faith, and righteous, virtuous living, and then order whatever you need from the universe. Immerse yourself in something that your God must follow up on and complete. Believe in your God, expect the presence, power, and activity of your God, activity of your God. Believe God, not the world. <coughs> Regularly perform faith. Accumulate and then spend your spiritual faith money wisely. 
Bruce Barton reminds us that the the ablest, ablest man in all walks of life are men of faith. Most of them have much more faith than they themselves realize perform faith. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> when I read that, right. what? I was just like, wow. First of all, I don't really even use the term faith, so I was uh, happy for his um, definition of faith. He said, faith is not just a belief in the unseen. It is an unconditional confirmation of a finished work. It is knowing or expectancy that comes from the living spiritual virtuous virtuous virtue virtuous of life. It said faith is not an, an invisible thing, it's a very visible thing. It is a physical effects. And you know, oftentimes when we hear faith, we hear and think of it like some blind thing that just is gonna happen. But he put it into motion. He put it into a performance. And I, I can appreciate that when, when he's talking about faith. Now, some of the stuff that stood out to me was he described faith as spiritual money. Um, I could dig it. Um, he asked this question. Well, he used the term expectancy. Um, moving as if, as if we know already that what we have asked for is there, acting in that way. And there has been some, um, for lack of a better term, miracles that have occurred in my life when when I have moved in, in faith. Um, then he asked the question, is God real to you? Hmm. Are God's ability real to you? And that's something else because, like I said, y'all heard me say before, I honestly believe a lot of people in our community are closet atheists. They're just scared to say that they're atheists. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's because... the how can I put it? We say we are the most spiritual people on the planet, but we... We don't act as if there's any spirit around us, I think. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that that's a, uh, that was a, that's a powerful question for myself, and that's a, that's a powerful question that we have to address within our community. Is God real? You know what I'm saying? And if God is real, then... You, if you're plugged into that source, what is it that you cannot do? <laughs> Anything else? I like when he talked about ordering from the universe the things that we need. I can remember that. And that, actually, like this, the process that we're in uh, right now with this book study, that was an order. And and moving forward to even start it, and just how consistent we've been in the process. And how, just how long even, has it been? Man, it's been over. Is it two or three years? I think it's three. Not what? Since we started this process. This, or at least this part of our process, because you know what I'm saying. Because when I came, it was at least we started it three years. It's yeah, it was three. three. Years. Yeah, because <laughs> we started with we started with uh, spiritual comp. What is it? Comp Complementarity. Complementarity. Uh huh. And we made it through that book. Uh huh. Did we read another book in between there, or we took a break? No. Did we? So we came straight to hip hop. Well, gospel hip hop. Did we? I don't think it was. I don't think it was two years. That's what I'm trying to think. I oh think, yeah, it's been dude, definitely I think two it's years. Been about three years, man. Are you sure? Do you remember? Yeah, I, we started in my spot. I've been out of my spot for a year. I don't even think Sasha was around when I when, when I started when, because I used to jog to the house with Gina. Gina was still uh, a, a top. But even Damn. prior to that, we had did a show. All this is. It's so how long ago did y'all do the show? The one that I came to. No, so that was that was well, last that, year. That was last July. Last that was last July. Last no, it year. wasn't. Yes, it was 2013 July. Yes, it was last year. Yes, it was. Yes, was it, it was. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we had started before that, didn't we? Oh yeah. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, we have, actually, I think we was done with complimentarity by then. Yeah. Cause. Yeah. Okay. He got the flyer. He said, <laughs> "Don't question me." Here's the flyer. But I'm just saying that this was a process, and even just a brainstorm of the things that we were trying to do in correlation with building to this to the school. We said we were going to do this, to do this, to do that, and we are in the process, and it has not stopped. You know, and s someone could have said it was just a thought, but we activated, we performed it, we performed it. You see, we, we still in performance, and, and we're still in performance. And now, just the session that we've had off the air, just with how to combine the two, the two entities, mm -hmm. to continue to perform. Right. You know, and this is knowing, and knowing over here. Mm -hmm. You know, identifying and knowing, like I can get down with this person for real. <laughs> In, in, the, in that, if if we were to use faith the way he describes it, that's true acts of faith. And that's true power. And power. That's put. That's 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 that's, that's calling the bluff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's like because we talk about the the the, the how hip hop saved us, right? Mm -hmm. But we have we have really really discussed what hip hop. You know, because as he says, we recognize that. Hip hop was God's response mm. to our suffering. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if we realize that, if if we understand and we embrace the fact that this thing we call hip hop is God's response to our suffering, and we redirect that energy, mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. what can we? I mean, it, what can we do? <laughs> really, you know? Because think about this. I used to sit in church because, uh, and th this is one of the dope dope things he said, and he has a song. Where he talks about this, um, where he breaks down the Mayan calendar, he broke down the Mayan calendar. Keras, when I um, I can't think of the song, I, I I'll look it up and I'll, but he breaks down the Mayan calendar. But one of the key things he says, if you want to escape Armageddon, read another book. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have never felt the. Let me put it this way: after I got mature. After I started thinking for myself, after I started reading for myself, I never felt that the whole discussion of revelations was for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I never felt that. I never felt this this thing that they talk about in Islam. I never felt the uh, the Mahdi returning and 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 their arm again. I never I never felt that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never I never really feared, feared the 2012 shit. The shit was funny. I had a radio show that night. You know what I'm saying? The shit was funny to me. Because I'm like, yo, that's not that's not my gospel. That's not my uh that's not my path. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's like by plugging into this thing called hip hop and seeing seeing it differently because it was never just the music for me. Mm -hmm. It was a message. You know, I used to I mean I I would get I would get the stuff and and the music would affect the music affected me so strongly. That Karis one did a song about eating meat. Mm. I became a vegetarian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the shit made so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I saw some of the behaviors that I had because I was eating meat. Mm -hmm. So I said, boom, let me let me give it a try. Mm. But it motivated me to do that. Mm -hmm. It motivated me to stay healthy. It motivated me. I, it, it, it's, it's just crazy. And I'm like, boom, what would happen if I stopped allowing it to happen to me accidentally? Mm -hmm. And started guiding it on purpose mm. to where I want it to be. Because mm. mm. I don't think we're doing that. We trying. We 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 in the process now. But as a people, we haven't done that. We haven't done that. You know. So I also like where he puts out a call to do something or say something that requires you to believe in faith every month. Wow. You ready to go on? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. On. No, yeah. huh? mm -hmm. We on perform over standing? No. Perform over standing, yeah. In all things, seek the deeper meaning. Truly seek to know pain, joy, needs, and wants of those who you may come in contact with. Cultivate your mind to truly understand the, sit the situations and circumstances of others. Even just for a moment, 
Join them in their life experience. Know this. To understand is to comprehend whatever you have been taught. However, to overstand is to experience whatever you have been taught. Such is the essence of wisdom and the spiritual leadership. At all times, perform overstanding. Seek to know through experience. Seek, excuse me. Seek to know through experience your own views as well as the views of others. Never settle for simply being educated. For spiritual overstanding comes discernment. With discernment comes agreement, resolution, conclusion, and solutions. While knowledge makes you aware of things, overstanding makes you aware of the character and the nature of things. For it is not enough to know whatever you know. You must also experience the things that you know in order to truly know them and correctly apply them. More than just knowing something, it is far better to experience whatever you know. This is the essence of wisdom and true leadership. Overstanding proves the validity of one's acquired knowledge. Knowing, knowing this, just because you have been educated, does not mean that your education is truly productive to real life. Theories must be tested and facts change all the time. The true hip hopa does not just read the gospel of hip hop. She performs the overstanding of, of this gospel and proves to herself the value of this gospel in, in real life. The teacher must know for sure that the gospel of hip-hop truly works in real life before she can seek to teach it to others. The teacher must be certain of the trueness and the authenticity of the gospel of hip-hop. Such certainty is found in the heart. The trueness of the gospel is determined by its compatibility with your heart. Does this path feel right to you? You can teach this gospel. If you are uncertain of the, its overstanding, if you are still in doubt, if you are still in doubt, know this, the teacher argues on behalf of the gospel of hip hop, not for the sake of winning, but for the sake of offering others the possibility of experiencing health, love, awareness, and wealth. He argues only from the experience and for the sake of reaching harmonious agreements between parties and conflicting opinions. You must always seek to overstand the things that you know and always seek to experience the overstandings of the gospel. Live by the productive experiences of your life. Learn to repeat the actions of your own success. Learn from the mistakes as well as from the achievements made by your actions as well as the actions of others. Discipline is a result of wisdom and overstanding. Applied wisdom is overstanding. A hip hopper's wisdom is manifested in a hip hopper's life. It proves that he truly overstands. More than just talking about what they've experienced, you can see the result of a hip hopper's wisdom by the effects in the hip hopper's life. Joy is an effect of overstanding. Peace is an effect of overstanding. Mercy, compassion, justice, and patience are also effects of overstanding. However, you can be wise and not experience any of these virtues. Be guided. Wisdom and knowledge are two different things. Wisdom can be achieved through life experiences, while knowledge can be acquired through educational intellectual studies. But to overstand is to have an experience have experienced them both. To overstand is to act upon what you know and have experience. Knowledge proves that you know some things. Wisdom proves that you have experienced some things, but overstanding proves that you have that you are active in both your knowledge and your wisdom of things. For it is the guidance of our God that adds valuable experiences to our knowledge. Such experiences create <coughs> wisdom, but even the wise are not always motivated to act. They have experience yet they are not always experiencing experiencing <clears throat> note this wisdom is not righteousness in fact to be wise one must go through some very unrighteous situations one must experience things that that can only be experienced in failure 
fear and ignorance. And after one, one has learned from such fearful and ignorant experiences, one then becomes wise. For when knowledge is backed by experience and the hip hop can, skillful, can skillfully apply them both while performing life, that hip hop is said to be overstood. For it has been said that the experience gathered from books is of the nature of learning. The experience gained from actual life is the nature of wisdom and a small store of the latter is worth vastly more than the stock of the former. Samuel Smiles Self-Help, New York American Book Company, 1904. Perform Overstanding. Overstanding. Mm. All right, let's take a quick, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Side on what we gonna move to next, and y'all hang in there. I'm coming at you right now with some John Coltrane. This is the Warrior Training Session, Adult Session, and we're discussing the third overstanding. We're continuing our discussion on third overstanding. Excellent reading. This is Giami Journey Radio, a heart of a simple production. <laughs> Where we strive to blow up your old paradigm.
Um, we're going to end the session on that um, with the last uh, overstanding for the day. We'll pick up on um, number 11 in our next session. We're going to shut down now so that we can go and do some work on some of these blogs and um, and some of the other stuff. So stay tuned to Giame, Giame Journey Radio. We're going to be bringing you a lot of different stuff. Check check out check out the timeline. Um, like us on Facebook, um, Giami Journey. Um, um, also, I, is, is SRS on uh, Facebook? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like SRS, um, like uh, Giami Journey, and keep up with us, all right? Because we're going to be doing some big things in the coming year, so we're going to end the session on that. Anybody got any last words for the people out there? All right, I guess nobody got no words, so we out, so I'm going to take you out. Peace.